Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Dokkan Metal video. So in this video I'm going to take you guys through a tutorial or like a guide on how to uh, progress in Dokkan or at least uh, from like a starter account how best to like move through Dokkan what kind of events should you take on when. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you guys is we're just going to go and take a look at what you should do the very first time you open up Dokkan and that's quest. Uh, so the reason you do quest and the reason most people do quest is that you basically want to do the quest that you can get stones. Each stage of the quest drops stones, each difficulty of the stage drops a stone and there's 27 areas each with like 10, 8, 7, 6, 15 stages in them. Each difficulty drops a stone so first thing you're going to want to do is enter quest and start farming some stones. While you're doing this, you can collect Dragon Balls, you can collect uh, free to play cards, you can start doing uh, some of the challenges for Vegito eventually later on to get a free to play LR. So there's plenty you can do inside the quest. Uh, I definitely suggest starting with the quest, that's the very first place you begin. Once you get a couple stones, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to come and you're going to summon on the banner. Uh, if you see two banners or three banners or four banners out there, I do suggest that you look for the Dokkan Fest banner. It will have that little symbol there for red coins, you'll see it there. And you click that banner and that's where you're going to summon. The reason you summon on the Dokkan Fest banner is simply because the units that drop off the banner um, are generally slightly better rates for SSRs. Uh, they're usually all part of some kind of category, two or three of them. So if you get two or three of those cards, uh, you generally can take on the category. And their drop rates are slightly better than a lot of banners. But as a new player, you're welcome to just split it. Uh, you can just go for whatever you want. Uh, you're more than welcome to go for anything. So once you've done a bit of quest and you've summoned a couple times, you might have a team that looks like this. Uh, you might have a 120% category lead of some kind, or maybe a top lead, like a tech or a physical lead. Uh, you might have a couple units from that category, like here we've got Bond of Master and Disciple. Uh, and then you might have picked up two or three, two or three uh, free-to-play cards for that uh, section, like these uh, two Gohans I have here, these two physical Gohans that we have here. So now that you have picked up these cards and you kind of have moved on with this team, uh, the next phase you're going to want to do is you're going to look at uh, filling out your team. So you can see I've picked up these two free-to-play cards here. So you've done a bit of quest and you've got this 120% lead. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the events. So you just want to scan the events and kind of see, okay, where in the events is there a card that I can use for my um, team? So... You're going to want to go through the events and take a look. You press the info next to the event. Some of them you may not have done. Uh, at this point, with a, any 100% or 120% lead, even a top lead or a category lead, you definitely can do events uh, quite easily. But yeah, you're going to want to take a look through events and you're going to see, oh, hey, there's a Gohan that drops here. Uh, that Gohan could be a Bond of Master and Disciple Gohan. You're going to pick up that card and you're going to start farming copies of it. You're going to start getting... Uh, 10 copies of that card so that you can get its SA maxed and you're going to get another three copies of it So that you can max out its uh, Hidden potential system for free to play cards uh, You're really going to want to uh, make sure that you get 14 copies of a card in total because that's generally how you max out everything in the card So then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to max out that card You're going to want to awaken that card as best you can and you're going to want to start putting some orbs in your units you're not going to have a lot of orbs, that's okay, it's not the end of the world, uh, but mainly what you're going to want to do is you want to take those orbs and stick them in your units. Once you start having some orbs in your units, you'll probably have some cars from logging in, uh, you'll probably have some cars from doing some daily missions, some starter missions, uh, some of the special missions while you've been farming quest. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is you want to take those cars and you want to put them in your team. You can put them in any unit, but generally you put them in your strongest units uh, as you want their SAs to raise, because you want their SA levels to raise. So we'll take a look at this Roshi here. You'll see I've got uh, a couple dozing cars that I need to use up. Uh, so we're going to hope that we can get Roshi's SA to 10 using some dozing, dozing cars. Uh, what you can do for any card, uh, you can click. If you click my video, it'll be in tutorials as well, uh, how to save cars. Uh, it will explain the whole system on how to save cars, what you're looking for, how you can see if you can farm a unit uh, SA or not. And that's really going to help you. 
because if you can farm a unit SA, obviously you can save yourself time and trouble. Once you've got all the unit SAs to 10, you're going to want to spend whatever remaining orbs you have in the hidden potential system uh, favoring cards that have dupes. If a card has dupe, it's better to get as much hidden potential in that card as possible. All right. So now we've raised our cards SA to 10, uh, we've stuck some orbs in our cards, uh, and we're really starting to look like we are um, getting a bit of a team going here. I'm not going to say we've got a great team, but we, we've got a bit of a team there. We've got these two free-to-play cards in there, uh, we've got a couple decent, we've got four category cards. Uh, and the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to awaken our cards. So, at this point, when your team kind of looks like this, let's say you've got two free-to-play cards, you've managed to max train, so all your cards are at level 100, uh, you've got a couple of SA in them, uh, the free-to-play cards should be maxed out SA-wise, maybe you've managed to farm the SA of two or three cards, uh, now your team's looking pretty good, okay? The next step that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start looking at taking on Dokkan events. So if we look at this team, we'll see here, okay, we just raised Gohan's training level. So like I said, you want all your cards maxed out. You want to stick some orbs in them. Now we need medals. So how do you get medals? Well, so to get medals, you have to do Dokkan events. Now the very first mistake a lot of people make with Dokkan events is they will um, start the Dokkan event and the first thing they do is they go into the Dokkan event and they click the uh, super Z hard difficulty of it and they realize, oh, I'm getting blasted and they never come back. So uh, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna check, okay, are there any cards here that awaken from events? Because those cards will be a lot easier to awaken than units that awaken from Dokkan events. When I say events, I mean the events you use to get some of the free play cards. After you've checked that none of them awaken, like unfortunately with this team, none of the cards awaken from free-to-play events, the next thing you want to do is you're going to want to check, okay, well, what events are live? You'll see events here that use keys. So you won't have a lot of keys as a new player. So using keys to take on events is not very good because one, you're not going to be able to fully awaken that card because you're not going to have enough keys to do so. And even if you do have enough keys, it's not worth your time to do that. Because as a new player, you don't have a lot of stamina per day. You don't have as much stamina as experienced players uh, or you know, longer, more aged accounts. So because you don't have this, you're not going to be able to um, push the cards through and awaken them all in one day. So it's pretty pointless. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to go through the events and see which events are up. Once you do that, you go to the, you click that top like you've seen me do here. You click growth, you go to the card, you go, okay, what does it need? Cool move on from there okay to get medals for cards in general to z awaken them can be quite difficult for new accounts uh, if you are lacking in medals uh, there is a daily event that you can do each and every single day to assist you in getting those medals uh, it'll be under the growth tab here you'll see it there it's awakening medals so the first thing you want to do obviously before going into Dokken events is if you need to z awaken cards you can come here you can grab the medals to Z-Awaken them. You do get some, on these stages, if you pick up the gold uh, purple capsules, you will have a chance at getting some uh, Supreme Cars and Elder Car medals. And also if you go to the Bubba shop, uh, you eventually can buy some Supreme Car and Elder Car medals if you Bubba or your SR cards here. So now that we have somewhat got our team ready, we're going to take on a Dokkan event. Now I'm going to take on the Dokkan event with this exact team uh, and I'm going to show you that it is possible. It will be a slight challenge, but it is possible and this is where you begin. This is how all teams begin. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go and we're going to take on the event. I will use keys this time uh, simply just because I want to show you uh, the event for Master Roshi uh, as a nice little change of pace. Uh, and I think every member on this team's event is actually uh, keyed up currently. So. That also doesn't help me. I didn't plan ahead when I reversed all the cards that I wanted to for this video. Uh, but so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to first find your same category lead. Uh, but obviously it's Dokkan Awaken State. If you cannot find this Dokkan Awaken State, choose the next best kind of lead. So for example here I've chosen Trunks because he's 120% super type lead and all my cards are super type. Uh, and also he leads Future Saga category units 170%, which is going to help uh, at least two other cards on my team. So. 
Now that we've uh, gone, we're gonna go, we're gonna pick up the key because we want it to be more helpful for us for the first couple rounds. And we've taken items. Generally, you wanna at least take two sensor beans um, or two dendes. Those will help you the most as a player because the most thing you're gonna struggle with here is just maybe healing when your health gets a bit low. But you can take any items that you want to get the job done. Don't be scared to spend items to Doken Awaken your first couple units, you may have to. Doken Awakening them will help you a lot more in future because you'll be able to finish the events a lot faster. So we're just going to go through this event. Uh, you will see obviously how the team performs. Um, you'll see how they you know, do as, as a team that is not fully prepared yet. You know, They do take some damage. They do struggle a little bit. I do have to use an item. That's what your experience as a starter account is going to be. And that is okay. There is nothing wrong with that. That is perfectly acceptable. It is helpful and good for you to start at this point. It will help you to get going and to understand what you've got to do. So, Vardos is fine. Vardos is a great unit. We summoned and we pulled Vardos. We're very happy about that. We've got a couple free-to-play cards here we just have to be careful of, like Gohan. The reason we have to be careful of Gohan is because a lot of his passive is not activated because he is not fighting a movie boss's enemy. Keeping that in mind, obviously, we're going to want to progress and move on here. So what we do is we just mix up type advantage, make sure that we're keeping as much type advantage on the field at any given time, and then we're going through there. You will notice I did not use the max difficulty for this Dokkan event. For your first couple cards ever on your account, you are not going to be able to do the max difficulty for Dokkan events. And that is okay. You're not going to be able to do it. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't stress. Don't panic. Choose the difficulty below. It's going to take you a couple more rounds for sure. You're probably going to need to do 10 runs to awaken your first unit and your second unit. And it's going to take you the whole day. And that's fine. Be patient. Don't rush it. Don't force yourself. Don't outpace yourself. Just keep moving on and clearing as many medals as possible. You can even do it over a couple of days if the events are live and they're like current units from the current banner. Most events, most Durkin events for units on the current banner come back. So you don't need to worry about that. Just take your time, pick up whatever units you can and push through from there. Generally you want to start, especially if you've got 120% lead, like at max, you're going to want to start with awakening that because you're going to want to get the 20% extra stats across all units on your team. If you have, for example, maybe a full lead, like 150%, 170% lead for your team, they will need 70 medals, they're Doka and Fest exclusive, they might need 70 medals, 77 medals. Don't focus on that unit first. They will have innately around about 120% across the board lead, 130%. Getting that extra 40% is great for the team, but it will probably be better off to, instead of awakening one of those units over two days, awakening two other units on the team over two days, making your run a little bit smoother when you go to awaken that card there. So that's generally my tips for Dokkan Awakening. But beyond that, there shouldn't be too many problems. Um, you'll be able to complete this event, you might have to heal, and that's all right. There's no problem with that, that's where your team is, that's the stage at which you are in Dokkan right now. That being said, obviously you want to keep that in mind when you're going on, that you can eventually up the difficulty. When I suggest upping the difficulty, as you'll see a bit later, but it, you will eventually up the difficulty and farming for things will become easier. Your biggest power spike will be when you can start regularly farming max level difficulty Dokkan events because you can start awakening more cards in your box. Once you can start awakening more cards in your box, more cards will have full access to their passives, you'll have more options for teams, and you'll be able to start pushing through and trying different content. Having different category teams and different type teams, and by type I mean physical, agility, technical, um, strength and physical, technical, intelligence, strength and agility. I said them all, yeah. Having a different type of team of each type will greatly aid you in pushing through and completing content as well. And we'll get to that later, what you can do with that content. But so now we're pushing through the Dokkan event. You see, we're not having too many problems. We're at the last phase, so most lower difficulties for Dokkan events end at three phases, which is also why we choose them, because we won't last the four phases, and the fourth phase will probably kill us. But pushing through and getting to the third phase, we will be perfectly fine here. We'll then move on 
uh, from this point and we'll move on to our next progression phase. Uh, your best thing here is obviously if you've got a good friend lead to kind of rely on them, keep them on rotation and just make sure that you're pushing with them as much as you can. They are going to do the majority of the damage considering your friend lead will Especially if you've started the game and you've got a friend who's a higher level account, your friend lead 9 times out of 10 will have uh, some hidden potential in it, probably have its links leveled, probably have a bit of gear on it, so it will definitely aid you as a new player. If you don't have any good friends on your friends list, you can drop by uh, the Dokkan Reddit, you can drop by on the Dokkan Discord, uh, you can see I've even put mine under one of the comment sections here. So there's plenty uh, that you can pick up. Uh, there's plenty of friends, there's find the friend systems for Dokkan, so you don't need to panic. You can very easily just do a post on the Reddit as well, and you can post, hey guys, looking for this kind of category lead, and you'll probably find at least one or two. Just while you are busy farming and finding your way, because lower end accounts, even though they get to the stage where they can do Dokkan events, sometimes can struggle, because you generally get matched with random friends from around about your account's level. If your account's in the 500s like me, that's generally what you find as a friend barring the ones that you actually have. So, keeping that in mind, we're about to finish our first Dokkan event, which is very, very good. Once we finish the first Dokkan event, we will get around about three to six medals. So, if you get lucky, you might get six medals each time and you'll only have to run it six times. You may also get unlucky. You may have to run it around about 11 times. That's something you can't avoid. Uh, I hope most of you get lucky, but you just need to kind of persevere. It won't be too bad. Uh, it'll take you probably a day to Dokken Awaken a full unit, especially as a new player if they require 35 medals. And vice versa, if they need 70 medals, it'll probably take you two days. But now you know you can do a Dokken event. So you're going to farm the Dokkan event until you have enough medals to awaken your character. Once you awaken your character, it's then time to progress onto the next phase of your team. So we're going to go back to our team here and we're going to move, we're going to awaken all of our characters. So we've now, I'm going to reverse awaken them. So reverse awakening is when a character is awakened, you can use a medal to reverse it back to a previously awakened form and you can freely reverse it back. So for the purposes of this video, I had turned all my units down a level basically, and now I am coming back down to max now. Okay, so bringing them all back to max quickly. So we've gone and we farmed all these events, and now we've managed to awaken all the units in our team. So we're starting to look pretty sharp. If you take a look at our team, it's looking pretty good. We're in like the 60s, 60, you know, the 60,000 range for HP and attack, which is a nice point under 120% lead or 100% lead that we can start looking at what we can farm next. So now you've done some Dokken events. Let's say you still haven't managed to pull some premier, premier units from the banner, or you maybe don't have enough under your category. So what you're going to do is you're going to start looking at some Extreme Z battles. So when I say you're going to look at them, you're going to be just looking at some doing the first couple stages of Extreme Z battles. You're going to do maybe the first one to five until the category advantages start kicking in until you really start struggling doing them. They cost no stamina, you can't use items. So you're free to just try as many as you can to get as many rewards as possible. And that is what I highly suggest. You'll see there are some like this Planet Namek one where you can awaken, for example, this Kid Gohan, uh, where it's a little bit easier, like the Omega Shenron one is, this one is. There's a couple easier, easier, where you can get a lot of rewards. You can get awakening medals for cards, but you can also get quite a bit of money, some medals, some orbs, uh, some grand cards. So let's say you still haven't managed to fully SA your team. Maybe you've got some new units that you want to put in, you haven't managed to SA. So what you're going to do is you're going to go, you're going to take your team, you're going to try and do the first five stages of as many easy as possible. Because at stage five of the easy A, we get one grand Kai. That's not a lot, but if you do quite a few easy A's, eventually you'll get enough grand cars to max out the team. I'm going to show you guys just an example with that exact team we just made that can do stage 30 of the Panic Navic Saga one. So I'm just showing you that for some easy A's, you will be able to get to stage 30 if they're the easier ones. 
with that team we just did the Durkin event with. We've now awakened all those units and now we're moving on to the Easy A. And we're going to take a look and see how we perform there. So we're going to finish this Easy A and we're going to claim the rewards. Obviously I'm not going to get the full rewards because I've already done it. So also when you do an Easy A you can only get the rewards once. So like you'll get a stone as well. You get a whole bunch of stones for Easy A's. So you'll get the stone as well. You'll finish the stone. Okay, cool, and then you'll get like some rewards like a Grand Kai, some orbs, some training items. It will all help you, especially with this Magnetic Saga one and the Omega Sharon one, they drop quite a few rewards and even a free to play card. So at this point, it's really good for you to start picking up some of these easy A's. Like, like I say, stage one, two, three, four, and up to five if you can. If you can, it's best to go up to five because you'll get that Grand Kai that you can use for any unit really that you want. You can use it for any unit you've just got, you can use it for units you already have, you can use it to flesh out your team. So you can use it for anything really. Once we finish this easy A, uh, and a couple of the easy A's, we're then gonna have a few more resources. So with that, we're gonna have a couple more stones, uh, we'll have, that we didn't have to spend mana, uh, stamina on. At this point also, because you've Dokkan awakened your first team, uh, it's very much in your best interest to uh, keep doing story, uh, maybe some events with your stamina if you're still working on some free-to-play options uh, Some new units for your teams if you can't do that Then you're perfectly welcome to also look at continuing quest and getting as many stones as possible Maybe working on the free-to-play a lot of uh, So there's still a lot that you can do at that point in time once you have your Dirk and Awaken team This team by the way will be hundred percent able to finish all of the quests in in Dokkan quest so we'll be able to finish all the difficulties, all the stages and everything once you have a team similar to this that's been Dirk and Awakened across the board. So you'll easily be able to keep farming stones. At which point hopefully you will have picked up your first DFE full category lead that's 150-170%. As you can see we've now finished the easy A and we're ready to progress. So we've finished this easy A, it's just to show you that we could get to a certain point and you've, you've combed all the easy A's and you've gotten to stage five and some, stage seven and others, stage one and two and, and some. You finished uh, the Panic Namek Saga one. You now have farmed a couple new free to play cards from events. You've uh, maybe managed to pick up a new lead. But uh, for now, we're just gonna say that we've managed to easy A uh, two really good free to play cards. Uh, that we managed to pick up from the event and finish uh, with our new team. So we managed to fully easy A them and free to play them. And now we want to slot them into our team and we're going to take a look at them from there. So we're just going to add in the Gohan and the Piccolo, our two free to play easy A units that we've managed to finish and orb. And we're then going to take a look at how our team's looking from there. So we're just going to slot them in quickly. They also bond of, of Master and Disciple. And we're just going to take a look at how the team's looking. So there, the team's looking really good. It's now into the 70,000s. It's definitely got a bit of a power spark. We've removed that weaker Gohan from the lineup. Uh, and we're really starting to look good. Um, it's starting to look really, really great. So now we want to go back to the easy A's uh, with this improved team and see if we can farm a couple more stones or anything like that. Again, you kind of want to just go through, comb all the stones and see where you can come through from there and some of the rewards. Now that you've also uh, been summoning a bit more, maybe you've managed to pick up 170% category lead. That's going to be your next spike. Whether it's 170% category lead or maybe it's a newer category, maybe it's 130% LR category lead. Whatever you've picked up, maybe you've picked up something that's going to power spark you. And generally it's going to be a lead or it might be two new units for a category. You might have maybe picked up something to replace your free to play units. That's going to be your next power spark. And you can see here, I'm just showing you how to comb through the easy A's and just make sure that you've got as many rewards as possible because you're going to want grand cars and everything like that. Now our team is looking good. Uh, we really want to move on and then kind of see from this point onwards what we can do where we can go okay so at this point in time our next phase after we've combed some of the easy A's and now we're looking at probably our strongest team that we have looked at in a while we then want to go and take a look at some of the challenges we can do now 
Challenges are going to be hard. Uh, there's no doubt about it. They're going to be super difficult to do. It's not suggested for everyone. But you want to start moving through the content progressively. So the next step that we can do is we can go back to the story and we can finish up farming some of the better free-to-play options. We now have teams that are capable of farming things like the Team Bardock event. We now have teams that are capable of farming the Ginyu Force event. We now have teams that are capable of farming any kind of event, basically. They may not have the full bonus, but they can farm all the stones from the event. You can do the special missions, and just overall, your team is better and more well-constructed to take things on across the board. You have a lot more control over things. You've possibly summoned a couple more times. Your box is looking a bit better, and you are starting to progress through the content. I do suggest going back, farming free-to-play cards as best you can, and then starting to look at, okay, what cards do I have that can easy A? Do I have a Masked Saiyan that can easy A? Do I have an Angel Goku that can easy A? Do I have the free to play Goku? Can I easy A him? Can I easy, what units can I progress with next? You might look at my guide for the LR Freezer and the LR Goku. Those are great places to start once you have a decent team because you can start farming those free to play cards. You can start easy Aing them at their easy A areas. You can start getting some free to play LRs from the prime battles and you can really start to progress and move forward with your team. At this point also you will have picked up some more Dokkan orbs. Your ranking will have gone up. You will maybe be sitting in around the 70s and 80s in terms of rank. You will start being a little bit higher and a little bit more efficient in what you do. So your next step will be to take a look at getting some free to play LRs. Like I say, you've now moved past that process. You're looking at your freezers, you're working on those. We're going to take a look at things like the Zamasu. We're going to take a look at the Pepe Gals event. We're going to take a look at, which is one of the easier events, but you're going to definitely want to take a look at Prime Battle cards. You're going to want to take a look at the free to play LRs. So, in terms of free to play LRs, the priority list should go for things like Zamasu uh, and Goku and Arale, which drop entirely from events and are really, really good cards. Those cards you're gonna to want to pick up and then you wanna look at Prime Battle LRs. Prime Battle LRs are not that great overall, okay, until they easy A, but they are very easy to pick up because they drop entirely from events and for most of them, their events are also entirely um, bonus based on free to play teams like the Ginyu Force. You've got Cell Prime Battle LR, Vegeta Prime Battle LR, Trunks Prime Battle LR, these are good cards that you can pick up to fill in slots on your team. Like let's say you're running a future category team. You could pick up Android, uh, the Cell LR, you could pick up the Trunks LR, you could pick up the uh, Zamasu LR. All of them will fit into Triumph Travelers, Future Saga categories, uh, Zamasu will fill into the Realm of Gods category. So there's a lot of cards that you can pick up. The next thing you're gonna want to do is you're going to start farming the Ultimate Clash. So you'll see that there's something called Ultimate Clash will unlock at about rank 100, 150. Uh, and once you unlock Ultimate Clash, you'll be able to go through Ultimate Clash and definitely, no matter what, with any team that can take on a Durkin event, you will be able with a team like this to take on the first stage and beat it 10 times. By beating the first stage 10 times, you get quite a few orbs, uh, you get quite a few stones, uh, you get a couple uh, training items, you get a bit of Zenny, you get uh, just just a lot in general But also you get a whole bunch of battlefield currency now It might take you a while to get enough battlefield currency to buy some battlefield LRs, but it'll really start to help you out Now the next cards we're gonna look for like I said before you really want to go and take a look for things like uh, Category leads you want to take a look for easy air cards and the reason you want to take a look for these cards when you get them from summons is because these are the cards that are going to elevate your teams to uh, SBR status or your top teams. So when we talk teams, we're not just talking category teams, we're also talking type teams. So at this point now, we're looking at our team that we hold here. And what we want to do is we want to look at the members of that team and we really want to see uh, what we can do to add to that team, to improve that team. Uh, to just uh, improve things in general. So one of the ways to do this is to now that we can take on the first couple stages of Battlefield uh, is we're going to want to take a look at Battlefield Currency. 
and we're going to want to see uh, how all that battlefield currency whether we can spend it on some units to flesh out our category teams maybe we can pick up our first battlefield LRs maybe we can pick up uh, you know uh, Babadi and Deborah which is kind of like a better battlefield lead uh, you know it's it's not you know entirely um, like up for discussion but we can definitely pick up some things in the battlefield that can help us so that's what we're going to want to do. We're going to want to pick up the battlefield, see what can help us, and then move on from there. There's things like Android 18, Krillin, this uh, Ub lead, the Ginyu Force lead. If you you know you've managed to get a copy from filling out the Freezer event and doing the Ginyu Force stuff, and you want to fill out that. So now we've started to collect some cards. We really started to improve our teams across the board. We're managing to take on the ultimate challenge but we are at the point now where we need to decide what we need to do next and what is our next progression so we're doing dokkan events and we're awakening cards and we're easily awakening cards so the next thing that we need to do in the next place that we need to go in terms of event is we need to go and take on super battle road so that's going to be our next duck like, progression point is super battle road uh, the next thing that you're going to take on is the first 10 stages uh, the reason you want to take on the first 10 stages of Super Battle Road is because they are the easiest so far. They can almost be taken on completely free to play. In fact, most of them can at this point. Um, and you're going to want to start taking these on because they're going to help you flesh out your type teams. That being your agility team, your super agility, your super strength, your super tech, your super... And once you start fleshing out those teams, you'll really be able to take on Ultimate Clash a bit further and you'll start to get better rewards from Ultimate Clash. Better stones, more cars, uh, finishing it faster, finishing it easier. And that's going to help your box accelerate. Once you've done that, we can then go back and we can start taking a look at what else we want to take on. So now that we've finished that, we can then start taking a look at things like Infinite Dragon Ball History and maybe the Legendary Goku event. Uh, so the reason taking on these events might be the next stage is because, so for example, they don't require categories. So they just require you to have a decent team. So if you have a certain team with a certain strategy, especially the first couple stages, which are a longer event, if you, let's say, even have a tech team, but all your tech units have uh, defense increasing, you can then take on this event and you should be able to get a couple stones. You may not be able to defeat all of it, but you can definitely take on some of it. Now is also the point where we can definitely take on a whole bunch of these Dokkan boss, uh, boss rushes. Uh, you'll easily be able to defeat those and they drop a ton of stones. You can beat all of them. There's 30 stones, 20 stones, 25 stones, 35 stones, tons of stones up for grabs. Any team that can easily crush a Dokkan event should easily be able to finish all of those. You can take items into heal. So it's definitely the next phase and clearing out some of the infinite Dragon Ball history stuff. Once you have finished this content, your next point of return is to start category challenges. Now you get category challenges for SBR, you get category challenges for uh, Infinite Dragon Ball History, you get category challenges for LGE. The best place to start is to take on category challenges at Super Battle Road. And you're starting to notice the trend now. So you'll go to Super Battle Road and you'll say, okay, what do I have? Maybe I have an Android team. Maybe I have a Pepe Girls team. Maybe I have... Uh, a future soccer team maybe I have a androids team you don't want to do that you want to take on uh, the latest team that you can uh, with your best best team that you have your top top team and you want to see if you can clear it that'll help you gauge the quality of Super Battle Road but it'll also help you get some rewards Super Battle Road's great it drops uh, Elder basically drops grand cars for you drops stones for you it can eventually drop an LR from, for you so Super Battle Road it's definitely the next point you want to go. The reason you want to take on the category road is because, again, very similarly to how we took on the first couple SBR to get our typing teams up, you're going to want to take on category battle road to get your categories up. Once you've done that, you can take on the category challenges at the IDBH or at the LGE. And then finally, once you've finished a lot of the category content, you can start looking at things like Extreme Super Battle Road, which is currently the hardest content we have on DBZ Dokkan Global. And you're going to want to take this on once you've finished probably a couple category uh, SBR, probably a lot of the LGE events, a lot of the RDBH events. 
uh, and you want to take on the extreme SBR. They are type based, so you're reverting back to type teams, but hopefully through doing all of the other content, you've started to really increase your teams and your teams are starting to look good to the point where they can maybe take on ESBR. So it's been quite a long video, but that is essentially the kind of, kind of a soft progression guide for Dokkan. Your teams will start to look like this, where they're super manu uh, they, they top of the line, they have top leads, they maybe have one or two top LRs for that category in that team, maybe one top LR. You don't need a whole team of LRs to have a good team. You can have quite a few good options from there, especially if you have later cards, newer cards. So what you definitely want to do is you want to take a look through your box and then just start to see where you can develop from there. In terms of content, it is very important to take note that timing is going to be a little bit dependent on the RNG of your pulls. If you say uh, pull all the top units off of this Gogeta banner and you pull uh, four copies of Gogeta, you pull Nova Shenron, you pull uh, three Omega Shenron, you pull an Oceana Shenron, uh, you manage to pull uh, like an SS4 Agility Vegeta and a Strength SS4 Goku and and then your team is looking great, then that's fantastic. Uh, you can also start looking at things like World Tournament. You'll see I just flashed a World Tournament team on the screen. Uh, you can start taking a look at um, doing things like that when they come out. So just keep an eye on content. There's a lot of platonic content, side content like World Tournament that you can do at any rank that you just kind of want to try and get rewards from to help you progress. But this is a soft progression guide. I hope it helps you guys. Take a look through whenever you get lost. And cool, I'll check you guys in the next video. Bye and thanks and bye.